You're watching Ramping Up Your English. Our current content unit is animals. This is segment three of episode 70. This episode is about endangered animals and what's being done to keep them from becoming extinct. One component of the animal report you're writing is the animal's conservation status. If the source you're using doesn't have that, then you can Google conservation status of and then put in the name of your research subject. That should get you to some information you need. On the wildlife cards, conservation information is listed in its own section. Here we see that brown pelicans are a common sight that indicates that the species is not endangered. Details show us that brown pelicans suffered from pesticides in the 1950s and 60s. That's a reference to DDT. The roseate spoonbill is not currently threatened, which means it's not endangered. It's worth noting that the threats it faced in the past and the successful efforts of the Audubon Society to save it. Peregrine falcons, uh, we see that the historic threat of DDT again, the last part of the information indicates rising populations in some areas for those birds. Now the Arctic tern status is a bit confusing. We're told that the population is stable, but that they are being threatened by overfishing. Here we learn a number of ruby-throated hummingbirds are in decline. That's also information about the fashion trade, threatening them in the past, as well as the cage bird trade. The information about destruction of their winter habitat is important, but so is the modifier that the reason is unsure. And here are some ways to report on your animal's conservation status. If they're on the endangered species list, use the first sentence. Using the word not can indicate the opposite. In the second sentence, populations of, and in the name of the animal, are declining, and then add the reason. Some organizations indicate when a species is of critical concern, you can use the third sentence, then add the organization that has them list listed as such. Now, if there's good news about your subject, the last sentence may be the one that does the trick. Feel free to add sentences about why they're doing well. Now, we're nearing the end of our animal report instruction. Our previous episodes have instructions and examples of how to do other parts of the report, starting with episode 40. I'd love to hear from you and see how you're progressing with this program. Send an email to letscreatepro at gmail.com. Visit my website, letscreate.org, for all the support materials for this episode. Just navigate to the episode 70 page. You can watch and even download all episodes of Ramping Up Your English at archive.org slash details slash rogue TV. Use the search box by entering Ramping Up Your English. You'll find all the episodes there. Ramping Up Your English can be seen in Ashland on Channel 15 or 115 on the Ashland Home Network and in the rest of Southern Oregon on cable channel 182. Showtimes are 8 a.m. on Mondays and 7.30 p.m. on Thursdays. Visit rvt.sou.edu for free live streaming. Showtimes will be different in different areas. Check your local public access and education stations. I want to thank my director, Denise Ross, and my talented and dedicated crew, and I want to thank you, our viewers. All of you helped to make this program an award winner. Join us next time for Ramping Up Your English. I'm John Letts. You've been watching Ramping Up Your English, a support program for intermediate-level English language learners. Learn more. Visit our website at letscreate.org. You can also watch or download today's program at archive.org slash details slash rogue TV. Join us next time on RBTV Voices for Ramping Up Your English.